Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. As preppers, we spend a lot of time and energy making sure that our homes are set up to deal with different kinds of disasters, but one thing we tend to overlook is how much time that we spend away from our homes. If you're still working, you probably spend at least 10 hours away just for that, and even if you're retired or able to work from home, if you start adding it up, you may be spending a lot more time away than you realize. And most of us probably use a vehicle of some sort to travel where we need to go. So that makes it one of the few things that's always nearby, regardless of where you may be. Because of this, every prepper should keep certain things in their vehicle to help them during an emergency. Doing that will give you tools and resources that you can use if something unexpected happens while you're on the road, or if you need to bug out and you don't have time to grab anything else. And with everything going on in the world right now, there is a chance that if something unexpected goes down, you may have to do the best that you can with what you happen to have with you. So today we're gonna cover some mostly inexpensive items that anyone could keep in their vehicle, whether you have a big SUV or small compact car, and how those items can complement other things you already have as part of an EDC bag or your on-body EDC or everyday carry. And a good place to start with this is cover and shelter gear. And yes, you should try to use your vehicle as shelter whenever possible, but it's still good to have the ability to make emergency shelters or have other things that can help you stay warm and dry. A tarp is a good basic piece of gear that would be useful in a survival situation, but also has a lot of everyday uses. They're very good options for emergency shelters because they're waterproof and they'll also take up a lot less space in your vehicle than something like a tent would. And of course they have other uses, like if you need to cover a load in the back of your truck. And even if you just have something like a car or a small SUV, you can still use a tarp to protect things like your carpet and your seats if you have to haul something messy or something that could damage those materials, then if you need to change it a tire, you can use a tarp as a ground cloth to help keep you dry and avoid messing up your clothes. So really, they're just very good multi-use items. Then anytime you have a tarp, you should also have plenty of paracord to go with it. Paracord can be used along with tarps to construct emergency shelters and can also be used to repair different kinds of gear. You can get regular 550 paracord, which is good for most tasks, or you can get survivor cord, which has some significant upgrades. In addition to having seven inner strands and an outer sheath, survivor cord also includes monofilament fishing line, wax jute for fire starting, and copper wire for making snares or repairing gear. You can also get survivor cord XT that upgrades the fishing line and copper wire with a strand of Kevlar thread and braided fishing line. And I think something like that survivor cord would go very well in a car kit because it adds a lot more functionality without taking up a lot of extra space. Then there's other items that you could use to help construct shelters like zip ties and duct tape. These like paracord can also be used to make different tools in the field and repair gear. Then another aspect to cover and shelter is having the right kinds of clothing and that's even more important as we're approaching these winter months. Those could be useful whether you're sheltering in your vehicle or if you have to leave it for one reason or another. And I showed a cold weather bag I plan on keeping in my truck in a recent video but I've been able able to upgrade some of the items I'll be keeping in it thanks to Venture Surplus. So I'd like to thank them for sending me those things for that kit and also for sponsoring this video. The first thing I picked up from them was a poncho liner or wooby to go with the poncho I keep in my EDC bag. This, like a lot of other things they sell, is real USGI gear. You can either get it new like I did or you can also get it and similar items used for a lower price. And if you like woobies, Venture also sells hoodie jackets that are made of a similar material. One of the things I got used was this liner for my M65 field jacket, and even though it was supposedly used, the one that I got looks brand new. I've been wanting one of those for a while because I've had my M65 for like 20 years, and this was just a really good opportunity to pick one up. Then I also picked up a new set of USGI base layers, and they also have commercial gear like this cold weather undershirt by Condor. Now I mainly stuck to cold weather clothing just because that's what I needed, but they also have a lot of other basic to high end in USGI gear, things like backpacks, pouches, holsters, and battle belts. Just like with the clothes, they sell real U.S. military surplus, which has been checked by their staff who's actually used that gear themselves. And since it's surplus, their stock is always rotating, so if you see something you want, go ahead and grab it. You can check them out at VentureSurplus.com, and if you decide to buy anything, be sure to use the code DIYOC10 at checkout to get 10% off. Then aside from all that, I'll also be keeping some other items in my truck, like some nice wool socks and hunting boots. The boots are very well insulated, and they're water 
waterproof, but if I had to travel on foot for a long distance, I would probably want something a little bit different. I'll also be keeping a wool blanket in my vehicle along with a couple of extra emergency blankets and some ponchos to make sure anybody that's with me is taken care of also. And aside from all the winter gear, you should have a regular change of clothes in your car as well. That's really important if you're somebody who has to dress up for work because a lot of that clothing, especially like dress shoes, are not good at all if you need to travel a long distance on foot. Then it's also a good idea to have other kinds of survival gear in your vehicle. While I keep a good knife in my EDC bag, I do also like to keep a backup in my truck. So between those two, my two regular EDC blades, and the multi-tool I keep in my bag, I'm pretty well set. A hatchet or camp axe is another good tool to have since they'll help you do basic survival tasks, although you would probably want something a little bit larger if you needed to like break down a tree that fell across a road. Then folding saws and pocket chainsaws are nice to have as well. For food and water, lifeboat rations are an excellent choice since they're more temperature stable than other options. You can keep other things like protein bars in your vehicle, but if you live somewhere like I do that can get very hot during the summer, I would be sure to rotate through those regularly. And if you have enough space filling a cooler with water bottles and not putting ice in, it is a good way to reduce the chance of those water bottles freezing while they're stored in your car. On top of that, it's also a good idea to have ways to collect and purify additional water as needed. And for this, I have a Nalgene-style water bottle and a steel camping cup, and I know that a stainless steel water bottle is definitely a better way to go, but most of the things that I'm keeping in my truck as far as survival gear goes, they're more budget items. Then on top of that, I also keep a Grail Ultra Press in my EDC bag at all times, so really that's just a backup for that. A small folding stove and fuel tablets like this will work well for boiling water or small cooking tasks since the stove doesn't take up much room and the fuel tablets are temperature stable. You can also use those stoves with other fuel sources like small twigs and even alcohol burners. For actually getting a fire started, I have a ferro rod, lighter, and some Vaseline and cotton ball fire starters. Emergency candles are another good thing to keep in there. You can get them in jars like this one, or you can also keep a candle lantern and some spare candles in there also. But you probably do want to take those out during the summer just so they don't melt. Another thing I like to keep in my truck is a tri-fold shovel, and since they fold up, they don't take up a whole lot of room when they're not in use. And if you get a real USGI shovel, they're very durable. This one was made in 1983, and it's still working just fine. Shovels like that can be used to help dig you out if you get stuck, and they can also be used for other tasks as well. It's also a good idea to have several pairs of gloves with you. Gloves like these can be used to protect your hands while working, but they can also help you stay warm during cold weather when they're used with wool glove liners. Then I'm also going to keep an old butt pack in there also. These can actually hold a lot of stuff, and if you have an old shoulder strap, you can attach that to the eyelets on the back of the pack and make yourself a decent little shoulder bag. First aid items are another good thing to have. This is just a small kit that I picked up at a local store that I keep under my seat. These are okay for small things like little cuts and burns here and there, but you may want to have some other items as well, like this is a tourniquet that I keep in my EDC bag. Now for defense, a lot of people like to keep some sort of long gun in their vehicle at all times. That's not something that I do just because of my current parking situation. If it was different, I probably would, but I do go ahead and load one up anytime I'm taking a longer trip, especially if it's overnight. But another thing to keep in mind is I do carry on my person, so I'll at least have that with me. Having a map and compass will help you navigate. They're especially useful if you can't use your primary routes for one reason or another. You can use those maps to find maybe smaller, hopefully less trafficked roads. Just be sure to have maps for anywhere you're likely to travel, including if you're on vacation or on the road for business. A notepad and pencil can help you take notes so you don't have to fiddle with a map all the time, and they can also be used to leave notes on your dashboard if you need to leave your vehicle. Vehicle. And I do think it's a good idea to have at least one pencil in your car because those aren't going to dry up or stop working like a pen could. And even though these aren't necessarily survival items, I do like to keep things in my truck to help deal with personal care and hygiene. I keep a bottle of hand sanitizer in my truck's door to help me deal with any nose picker germs from the guy who used the gas pump right before me. Then I also like to keep some wet wipes in there in case my hands get dirty. I can scrub them off before I eat or do anything else that I don't want to have grubby hands with. But if you're going to depend on your vehicle, you want to do everything that you can to keep it running as long as possible. And to do that, you're going to need tools. A good jump pack like this will allow you to jump start your vehicle by yourself without having to depend on a nice stranger to help you out. Most modern jump packs are small enough to fit in the center console of your car, and they still provide plenty
plenty of power. They have lithium ion batteries, so they should also be able to store for a long period of time. Now, as good as these are to have, they aren't foolproof. They can get turned on accidentally and drain, and over time, the batteries will start to degrade. So because of that, you should have some good quality jumper cables as well. As a general rule, you want your cables to be six gauge or lower. Remember, the lower the gauge, the thicker they are, and you want them to be around 15 or 20 feet long. Having cables that thickness and that length will be sufficient for most people to do the job safely and also be able to connect the cables easily. Another thing you should have in your vehicle is a spare tire, and I know that isn't a tool, but a lot of new cars don't come with them anymore. So if you bought a car within the past several years, you might want to double check that you actually have one. Then other things like portable inflators, jacks, breaker bars, and a socket to fit your lug nuts on your car, those are all good to have as well. If I'm traveling, I like to keep an extra gas can in my truck. Having that would allow me to have a little bit extra fuel if I start to sense things might start to go downhill, I can go ahead and top off my truck, fill up that gas can, so I'd have at least a little bit extra fuel to get me closer to home or some other safe location. For nighttime situations, it's nice to have some LED flares like these to help approaching motorists know you're stopped because a lot of accidents happen when people are parked by the side of the road, especially at night. Then, of course, flashlights and headlamps are essential items as well. And you don't want to overlook having some basic tools in your vehicle. At a very minimum, you would want to have the tools that you would need to do things like swap out a battery or change headlights or taillights. Wrenches, sockets, and ratchets are always good to have, along with screwdrivers and bits to help deal with different kinds of fasteners, including Allen and Torx bits. Just keep in mind that keeping some tools like crowbars and bolt cutters in your vehicle could get you in trouble if they're seen by law enforcement, because those things are commonly used by criminals to break into stuff. If you have a truck with a camper shell or tonneau cover, then you can store even more things to keep it running. Gas cans, bottles of oil, and other fluids, and also larger survival items like water jugs would all be good to keep back there. And you really could take the idea of a vehicle survival kit as far as you want to. You could keep additional gear like a Kelly Kettle kit, gas masks, or other tactical gear in there. It all really just depends on how much space you have, the environment that you're in most of the time, and what your personal needs are. And one thing your vehicle would be an essential part of is a bug out plan. So if you want to see things that you should take with you if you needed to bug out, then click here. Or if you want to see things that you need to bug in, then click here. Once again, I'd like to thank Venture Surplus for sponsoring this video. Thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.